that experience that emotions are events that happen to you is an illusion that the brain creates. Your brain is using your past experience as fodder for predicting what's going to happen. That's what an emotion is. That's what an instance of any emotion is. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's something wrong in the world or with you. I've been studying emotions for about 30 years. There are a lot of misconceptions that people have about emotions and how they work. There's great variability in emotional lives. Some people float in a sea of tranquility. They're kind of mild and easy to deal with. Other people tread water in a tumultuous sea of emotion. They're constantly having intense experiences. They feel as if their emotions control them instead of them controlling their emotions. But all of that experience, that emotions are events that happen to you that you have to deal with is an illusion that the brain creates. Your brain is always regulating your body. Your body is always sending sensory information back to your brain, like how much glucose, how much oxygen, how much salt, what's the status of almost every metabolic factor that keeps you alive and well. And your brain isn't wired in a way for you to experience those sensory changes specifically. Instead, what you experience is a summary. And that's where those feelings of pleasantness or unpleasantness, comfort, discomfort, feeling worked up or feeling calm and quiescent, that's where those simple feelings come from. And what your brain is doing is telling itself a story about what is going on inside your body in relation to what's happening in the world. And it's creating this story using knowledge about emotion that you have learned from your past to predict what you're going to feel. That's what an emotion is. That's what an instance of any emotion is. So why is it important? When something goes wrong, you need to use your explanation as a tool to figure out how to fix things. For example, in depression, you're metabolically compromised because your brain believes there's a metabolic problem in your body. And the symptoms of depression are the consequence of the brain's attempt to cut costs. So you feel fatigued or you feel unpleasant. You feel like you can't concentrate, you can't move because moving your body is really metabolically expensive. That's where depression comes from. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's something wrong in the world or with you. If you understand that the brain's most important job is regulating, coordinating the systems of the body, then you start to think about the treatment differently. The fact that emotions don't happen to you, that your brain is making them, and that your brain is using your past experience as fodder for predicting what's going to happen has really big implications. The first really big implication is that you are an architect of your experience. It involves seeding your brain to predict differently. But if you understand that every experience you have now becomes part of your brain's ability to predict, then you realize that the best way to change your past is to change your present. So just in the same way that you would exercise to make yourself healthier, you can invest energy to cultivate different experiences for yourself. You can learn new things, watch movies, read books that would require you to have different experiences that get you outside of the normal range of what your brain would predict. Because if you practice these things that you learn, they become more automatic and then your brain just uses these new experiences to predict differently in the future and for you to act differently in the future which gives you the opportunity to be different than you are right now. Not everybody has as much control as they might like, <laughs> but everybody has a little more control than they think they do. As an adult, you can make decisions about what you experience now. You can make choices about how you act. Sometimes in life, 
we are responsible for changing things because we're the only ones who can change them. And that can feel unfair. And it is unfair in a certain way. But it's also helpful because it means that you always have tools available at your disposal to heal yourself, to act differently and to feel differently.